स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया and then let me also introduce two other concepts in fact uh, three other concepts one is the integral form of the hypergeometric functions and also uh, look at the hypergeometric functions for two variables x and y and also introduce certain special integrals known as the elliptic integrals right so the first discussion will involve uh, the integral forms the integral forms of hypergeometric function okay so the first form that we that is useful for us is the following f of a b c comma comma 1 minus z is gamma of c by gamma of b times gamma of c minus b integral 0 to infinity s of b minus 1 1 plus s of a minus c times 1 plus s z to the power minus a d s okay. Okay. So, then the other relation that we will be useful for us is f of a b c of 1 by z is gamma of c by gamma of b times gamma of c minus b integral 0 well integral 1 to infinity s of a minus c uh, s minus 1 of c minus b minus 1 s minus 1 by z to the power minus a d s right. Okay. And then uh, the there is another relation that is the relation of symmetry. Uh, that comes right from our series representation of the hypergeometric function. We also see that there is a symmetry involved in this function. We see that f of a b c of z is also f of b a c of z. Okay. So, a and b can be flipped. Okay. And then the fourth important relation is the relation by uh, a mathematician Ardelli, which is the double integral form. The double, the double integral, integral form by by Ardelli, and this is given as follows. So f of a b c z is gamma of c square divided by gamma of a gamma of c minus a times gamma of b gamma of c minus b okay times the double integral so times the double integral of 0 to 1 double integral of 0 to 1 t to the power b minus 1 uh, times well times tau to the power a minus 1. So, since we have two variables of integration these are t and tau. So, t to the power b minus 1 tau to the power a minus 1 1 minus t to the power c minus b minus 1 times 1 minus tau to the power c minus a minus 1 right and then uh, integral with respect to dt and d tau divided by 1 minus t times tau times z to the power c okay okay so then i am also going to introduce the hypergeometric function of two variables and we will look at a special form of these two variable functions known as the apples form so hypergeometric function for for two variables Uh, also known as the apples form the apples form f1 
of a comma b comma b prime comma c comma x comma y is double summation double summation m from 0 to infinity and n from 0 to infinity of a the Pokhammer symbol a of m plus n b of m b prime n by by m factorial m factorial n factorial c of m plus n uh, times x to the power m times y to the power n right and this is also equal to the gamma of c can be written in in the integral form so, the integral form is gamma of c by gamma of a times gamma of b well we do not have a b outside so this is gamma of c minus a right and times the integral 0 to 1 t to the power a minus 1 1 minus t to the power c minus a minus 1 times 1 minus t x to the power minus b times 1 minus t y to the power minus b prime uh, d t. Okay. So, that is the integral form of the hypergeometric function of two variables. Okay. So, then some useful relations for this Apple's form. Uh, so, so along this line I am going to mention some useful relations between between the Apple's form or the two variable form and the regular form or the one variable form of the hypergeometric function. Okay. So, the first relation can be checked quickly is that the Apple's form f 1. So, I denote my Apple's form as f 1. So, f 1 of a comma b comma b prime comma c comma x comma 0. So, let us say we set one variable to 0 can be seen to be equal to the regular hypergeometric function f of a b c comma x. Okay. Setting one variable 0 will bring back to our one variable hypergeometric function. Similarly, if we set the other variable, we will again look at, uh, we will see that we will get another form of one variable hypergeometric function. So, so if we set the other variable 0 f 1 of a comma b comma b prime comma c uh, comma 0 comma y, this is f of a comma b prime comma c uh, comma y and and that is it. So, in general I can write down my hypergeometric function of two variables for the general case as an infinite sum of hypergeometric functions of one variable. Right. So, so in general in general my apples form my apples form can be expressed my apples form can be expressed as an infinite sum as an infinite sum of the ordinary the ordinary hypergeometric function okay okay as follows so f1 of a comma b comma b prime comma c comma x comma y can be written as the following sum this is summation m from 0 to infinity of the Pokhammer symbol of a m b m by c m uh, times the hypergeometric function of a plus m comma b prime comma c plus m comma comma y uh, times x to the power m. Okay. So, that is what the summation is. So, finally, let me also introduce the the uh, the relations of the so called elliptic integrals. Okay. So, we have seen these elliptic integrals earlier when we were describing the solution of the bent beam problem or elastica. So, let me now quickly elaborate on these uh, these uh, functions. So, I have in, in, I have 
written down the elliptic integrals of first, second and third kind. So, elliptic integrals. So, the first kind will is has the following form f of phi comma k is integral from 0 to phi of d v divided by 1 minus k square sin square v. Okay. The second kind the second kind is given by e of phi comma k. In fact, this is the kind that we have used in our description of bent beam problems earlier. Integral from 0 to phi of square root 1 minus k square sin square v dv. Right. So, k is from 0 to 1 and phi is from 0 to pi by 2 and alpha alpha is from minus infinity to infinity. Okay. Okay. So, and then my elliptic integral of the third kind, third kind is pi of phi comma alpha square comma k, this is integral 0 to phi uh, dv uh, by 1 minus alpha square sin square v times square root of 1 minus k square sin square v. Okay. Okay. So, uh, so uh, with regards to these three elliptic integrals, I have also some useful relations. So, let me uh, uh, let, let me say that my function capital K of k is the elliptic integral of first kind evaluated at phi equal to pi by 2 comma k and my e of k denotes the elliptic integral at pi by 2 comma argument at k. Right. So, then I have some relations which will we will be using while we solve uh, while we integrate our model equations. The relations one of the relations is the Legendre relation. the Legendre relation which states that uh, E of k times k of k prime plus E of k prime times k of k minus k of k times k of k prime this is equal to pi by 2 and we have more properties. of the form f of 0 comma k is e of 0 comma k is 0 and f of phi comma 0 is e of phi comma 0 is phi and e of phi comma 1 is sin phi and e of well we have f of phi comma 1 is log tan phi plus secant phi okay okay so these are my uh, relations that we will be using in our later development of the model okay so this is so far the basics that i have covered in terms of the special functions now my next set of lectures are going to cover some basics in physical chemistry namely the introduction of interaction energy, uh, the van der Waal interaction energy and the so called Leonard Jones potential. Okay. So, so, let me just introduce some basics in physical chemistry. So, again these basics are extremely rudimentary in the form that almost all students taking this course must have done. Uh, certain high school science courses. Okay. So, so I am just revising some of these basics, so of physical chemistry. Okay. So, let me start with the concept of interaction energy, interaction energy. So, when I talk about interaction energy, 
I talk about the interaction of two non bonded structures, we do not talk about bonds like covalent bonds, ionic bonds and so on, we just talk about uh, the energy of interaction between two structures for example, two molecules, two compounds which are not bonded to each other. Okay. So, this is I denoted by shorthand I E and these, these are for two separate separate non bonded non bonded uh, molecular structures molecular structures ok. Uh, ok. So, so, my interaction energy well uh, if my if I want to find the interaction energy of many many structures we could either use the discrete uh, application where we can individually sum the interaction energy or if this uh, distribution of the structures are nearly homogeneous and the distance is infinitesimally small then possibly we could use as the, uh, the in interaction energy in the form of an integration rather than a summation. So, so what I just said is the following, so for, for discrete applications for discrete applications I can sum, sum the interaction energy per, per atomic pair right or sum the interaction energy per structure, where my net interaction energy is E is given by summation double summation i j of phi of rho i j right, where my phi phi of rho i j is defined as the potential or the interaction potential function for well for for my atom atom pairs uh, i j ok. So, rho i j is the interaction potential for atom pair i j and located located at rho i j apart located at rho i j apart ok. So, then, then for continuous applications I can change my double summation as double integral for continuum uh, for continuum applications I can assuming assuming that atoms are uniformly distributed uniformly distributed distributed over over the entire entire uh, entire range of surface range of surface essentially we do not want non uniform distribution otherwise the sum integration may not may not hold or may not make sense. So, assuming the atoms are uniformly distributed over the entire range of the surface, then I can describe my interaction energy i e per per atom pair per atom pair as follows. So, e my e is a double integral of over surfaces s 1 and s 2. So, these are my atomic pair surfaces of phi of rho times d a 1 d a 2 right. So, I am talking about the atomic or the two pair structure interaction uh, and then I take the integration of these pair structures right and also uh, these are multiplied by the number of atoms per unit surface or number of structures per unit surface. So, where my eta i is the mean the mean surface uh, surface uh, density density of atoms or structures on the ith on the ith molecule on the ith molecule okay and my si is the surface surface of the ith molecule 
okay so so which means eta i is the number of atoms per unit surface of the structure we are considering the ith structure right so so that is the interaction energy per pair so let me let me highlight this let me highlight this concept with an example okay a very very basic example of a graphene sheet right we know that graphene sheet again uh, this is basic class 12th physics we know that graphene uh, has at the molecular level graphene has hexagonal structures and also graphene is arranged in such a way that each of these structures are arranged in sheets so we have the arrangement of graphene is in the form of sheets and that is why graphene is uh, is very slippery okay so let me look at a hexagonal structure of graphene so we have typically uh, typically in a sheet let us say this is a sheet of graphene, we have uh, hexagonal structures of graphene where each of these vertices of the hexagon are occupied by carbon atoms. These are also, uh, so let me just extend these structures right and so on. So, notice that if we were to look at each of these joints, these one joint which is occupied by one carbon uh, atom is shared by three hexagonal rings. So, ring like uh, 1, like 2, like 3, right. So, so, which means that since there are 6 carbon atoms in one ring, so essentially the number of carbon atoms which per ring will be 6 times one third or 2 carbon atoms per ring because each carbon atom is shared by 3 rings, okay. So, which means the atomic density per molecule of the of the graphene is 2 ok. So, so this the example says find find the surface the surface density of carbon atoms surface density of carbon atoms on a sheet on a sheet of graphene ok. So, let us say uh, so, we know that graphene again this is class 12th physics graphene consists of the hexagonal rings or the so called tessellated uh, tessellated hexagonal rings consists of tessellated hexagonal rings right and uh, so that so that each each atom in the ring ring is bonded to two other rings two other rings which means that my uh, my atomic density eta eta my atomic density eta will be 6 atoms times one third because shared by three different rings divided by the surface of one ring let us say a hex or a hexagonal. So, I see that my eta comes out to be 2 by a hex or where area is the area of one hexagon right and that gives me my surface uh, or the number of atoms per unit area of the ith ring of the graphene. Okay. So, where my A hex is the surface area area of one ring. Okay. So, then let me also introduce once we have once we have introduced the concept of interaction energy. <coughs> let me also look at the specific interaction energy known as the van der Waal interaction. So, again van der Waal interactions are non contact interaction or inter unlike the interaction like covalent or ionic uh, ionic interactions. So, these are non contact interactions. So, van der Waal van der Waal uh, interaction energy these are either attractive uh, attractive or can be repulsive right. 
we will see look at a specific form of the interaction potential which models this attractive slash repulsive interaction energy. Namely, we will see that the, if the atoms come very close to each other or almost touch each other, this interaction energy becomes strongly repulsive and when they move slightly away from each other, they become eventually they become uh, attractive and then the, uh, the amount of attraction they falls, it falls away exponentially or falls away uh, yeah, exponentially fine. So, so, as I just said these are attractive or repulsive interactions and these are non bonded ok and uh, non bonded between between two or more molecules ok. So, I am not going to go into extreme depth of these interaction energy I am going to just highlight the basic uh, the basic mechanism or the philosophy of these interactions which is useful for our model development. Students who are more interested again can look at some of the basic school textbooks in physical chemistry ok. So, so these are non bonded interaction between two or more molecules also known as uh, also known as known as the intermolecular forces intermolecular forces ok. Uh, so, then once we have the van der Waal interaction energy I can describe my van der Waal force. My van der Waal force is the gradient van der Waal force van der Waal force is between two non bonded between two non bonded atoms. Uh, is the gradient of well is the gradient of the interaction energy right is the gradient where E is my interaction energy ok. The van der Waal interaction energy I have put a minus sign. So, that to represent that this force is an attractive force ok ok. So, then uh, let me let me start uh, let me highlight this uh, interaction energy with a quick example. So, for example, suppose let us in fact look at the example that we are eventually interested in. So, suppose we are given a cylinder let us say a carbon nanotube right and we want to and we are also given the interaction energy of the carbon nanotube with some surrounding particles. So, these are all cylindrically symmetric uh, objects and I want to find the interaction or the van der Waal force of the carbon nanotube with its surrounding objects. Note that due to cylindrical symmetry the radial components of the force the radial components they completely balance out each other and the only the only force that we will have will be along the axial direction or f z right. So, suppose suppose my molecule which is a molecule that we are after is rotationally symmetric. My molecule is rotationally symmetric right around around the z axis. My molecule is rotationally symmetric around the z axis then then the resultant the resultant force is in axial direction the resultant force is in axial direction right and my f of v f of van der Waal v d w is given by negative of the interaction energy uh, with respect to the axial direction z and this has the direction k hat. So, my k hat is my k hat is the following direction that I have shown in the figure. Notice that along r all the components of the force they cancel each other ok. So, so again negative sign means attractive attractive and uh, along forces along all other directions directions cancel right and that is easy to see ok. So, then 
so once I have described my van der Waal interaction energy, let me also describe the so called Leonard Jones potential which describes these uh, this van der Waal interaction energy. So, Leonard Jones potential is has a very specific form and it represents this attractive repulsive uh, type of an interaction versus the distance between the two atoms or structures. 